All right, guys, today we're going to be replacing the front shocks on a 2009 Hyundai Accent. This is a very similar process for the Hyundai Kia model line of these years. As you can see, we already took out one shock from the driver's side, and you can see the whole top head is completely dry rotted and probably cracked in some places. A really bad wear. And yeah, a lot of a lot of noise when you're driving. We're replacing them with the eBay special. I got both shocks on eBay, full assembly with springs, shocks, bushings, top hats for about $135 shipped to the door. I'll have a link in the description for them below. So this is the easiest, simplest bolt-on solution, which is gonna require the least amount of work. And once you have your shock off. Just compare because there are some mounting points here that we want to make sure differentiate between the left and the right one. This is the driver's side. I matched it up with this driver's side and we're going to go ahead and reinstall it right now. We are going to be replacing the lower ball joint of this 2009 Hyundai Accent. And I moved the tire. I noticed that the car had, that the wheel had play in it and that led me to believe that the ball joint is bad and I'll show you guys some clips of that and how you can test it but we picked up a new set from eBay this is the company that I used I think I've used that company before on sway bar endlings and it did okay on my Honda again China part so I don't expect them to be the best but I expect them to do the job so this installation shouldn't be too difficult. I did go to the store and rent a ball joint separator. This might come in handy. So watch the video guys. Wow, did this guy just try to piss? Anyway, watch the video guys. To remove these shocks, you have to undo these three stud bolts from the top of the shock. As we move down, you're gonna remove a few things. You got 10 mil for the ABS on both sides of the shock to 10 mils. And you also have a 12 mil for the brake line. Now these big bolts are two 17s on each side. And if you are connected to your sway bar end link, you have to disconnect that as well. Again, we're not connected. So once you remove all that, you just have to sneak the shock out from the, all the wires and we just pull it right out. old one new one stupid axle popped out so be careful these things pop out like easy as hell keep that uh, axle pushed in so great you gotta do a trans flush now I'm gonna keep that here at least it's gonna support the axle but uh yeah I mean I guess we'll add some more fluid it's a cheap drain and refill I guess Alright, so once you get the ABS bolt here and on this side, 
and the brake line installed on the new shock you're pretty much good to go in my case if you are running your sway bar end link you'll have to connect it from here to there I'm not running them because they keep breaking some of these parts are pretty darn cheap uh, the hardest part of the whole install was just uh, getting this big shock through the wiring here between the brakes and the ABS line that was probably the hardest part of the job so we're just gonna tighten up these and we're good to go one thing we can also do is just double check if that center nut is nice and tight sometimes if they're loose the shark will make some noise Alright, the way I'm testing this is taking the brake rotor, moving it left to the right. There definitely is play in the system. You can also watch the ball joint here. And you can see that there is play. This play is causing this wheel to turn outward and drift. Now to remove this ball joint, there's two bolts right here on each side. You got a cotter pin that you're going to have to remove from this bolt and drop this nut. The hard part is disconnecting the ball joint from the lower control arm. But that shouldn't be a problem guys since we got that ball joint separator. Surprisingly, pretty easy to come off. Let's use technology. Press up against that bolt. can see is ball joints out of the lower control arm here which is perfect we're gonna take we're gonna take those two screws here take the ball joint off still a 17 Alright, old car, as you can see some of my uh, dust shield cover for the brakes is all rusted through which is fine I guess, can't expect much more, no luck with this Hyundai, but we got this one off so it's compared to a new one. The new item, the old item. The old item here is going to be a little bit loose at this ball joint and you can feel that how easily we are able to move that ball joint. So it didn't have really a tear in the boot like tie rod ends and um, sway bar end links do but clearly I think that was the defective part. So we're going to reinstall this one. We do have a brand new cotter pin that we will include and install in there. Do everything in reverse. I don't think we need an alignment or anything after. We'll go for a test drive and see if that fixed our pulling problem.
this point we have to bring the lower control arm down and we're gonna lift this whole assembly up and drop it right in the hole of the lower control arm. All right, after some few frustrating moments later, we got it in the hole. It stopped leaking, but we did lose a little bit of transmission fluid. Hopefully, that's all sealed up now that we pushed it back in. Let's put the nut on, the cotter pin. Torque it down. So I got the jack on the knuckle to raise everything up. That's just the way I like to tighten things. And you know, on second thought, I am gonna get the torque wrench and find the torque spec. All right guys, so last week I was working on this and I thought it was the lower ball joint on the driver's side after we replaced the shocks and it actually turns out it's the, look at that, it's the tie rod end. It has a ton of play, ton of noise. So we went on 1A Auto, picked up brand new tie rod ends. Now the reason I went with 1A Auto is because they offered a lifetime warranty and I just used their lifetime warranty on one of the ball joints and they sent in a ball joint and they sent us a uh, new ball joints under warranty no questions asked so I'm buying more stuff from 1A Auto with their lifetime warranty because this car needs a lifetime warranty on all the parts I've been replacing on it so the, the setup is pretty simple you remove a 17 mil bolt Take the copper pin out and right now we're gonna attempt to just hit it with a hammer if the hammer doesn't work i still got the ball joint removal tool that we used for the ball joint that that also is a very good method to remove these stubborn bolts but leave the bolt in on top and it's out so that was an easy easy process here we're gonna get the nut loose here and then we're gonna spin it off. We're just gonna count how many times we're spinning it because when we, we install the new ones, we wanna spin it the same amount of times to limit the amount of alignment change that we do. They, these affect the alignment quite a bit, but if you count them, you'll be somewhat in range. It's still recommended to get an alignment after these kind of jobs, but they break so often. I'm not gonna get an alignment every time they break as long as it's within some range of being in spec and it's not pulling crazy to one side we're good so it took me 14 turns to take this one off match up the correct one where it matches and we're just going to screw this one back in with 14 turns going in from here probably the easiest tie rod change of my life Obviously the alignment will have to double check when it's good and we're also going to replace the driver's side the lower ball joint because it might have the minimalist, the minimalist amount of play in there and since we got new shocks new tie rod ends we want to make sure the ball joints are good and uh, this will be good for the next couple of years hopefully. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame, though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'ma do it all for you, come along and see it's true.